Today is National Day of Remembrance to honor German-American children internees during World War II. That event taking place outside of St. Mary's University this morning. Take a look around 50 students holding photos, taking time today to share the stories of those children who were confined along with their parents in internment camps. Organizers also hope to get those children commemorated by the U.S. government. And we vowed that we would not stop ever until German-American internment and German-Latin American internment was officially recognized for them as it had already been done 40 years ago for Japanese Americans and uh, 22 years ago for Italian Americans. Same camp, same time, same numbers. Although the Nazis surrendered in 1945, Crystal City Camp, where German, Italian, and Japanese American families were held, didn't close until 1948. Now to the Beijing Winter Olympics as the games wind down history on the bobsled track. American Alana Myers Taylor and the record book she just entered, plus some U.S. athletes who won silver won't be going home with their medals. The ruling that's left them empty handed for now. Here's ABC's Alex Prochet from Beijing. Alana Myers Taylor adding to her medal count this Olympics. She and teammate Sylvia Hoffman earning bronze in the two woman bobsled. Myers Taylor also won silver in the inaugural mono bob. She's now a five time Olympic medalist, the most decorated black athlete at the Winter Games. She will also be the flag bearer for Team USA at the closing ceremonies. But while Myers Taylor will have her medals to take home, some Americans will not. The Court of Arbitration for Sport rejecting an appeal by the figure skaters who earned silver in the team competition. It's because of the doping case involving Russian figure skater Kamila Valieva, who competed in the same event and helped her team, the Russian Olympic Committee, win gold. The IOC had previously decided to withhold the medals until her situation is resolved. Skier Michaela Schifrin has one more chance to earn a medal. The mixed team slalom has been postponed to Sunday because of bad weather. And here's an interesting statistic. According to ESPN, the U.S. women will head home from the Beijing Olympics with more medals than the men. Statistics also show it's been 12 years since the men have won more medals than their counterparts. Alex Perche, ABC News, Beijing. Hey, I think as far as weather goes, today is a gold medal day for us here in South Central Texas. Absolutely beautiful temperatures, and most spots have climbed into the mid-60s today. Mostly clear skies, low humidity, light winds. Can't ask for much better. We do have some changes that will start to kick in tomorrow, and then more temperature swings next week. We'll talk about it all in just a few minutes. First, checking on the aquifer down two tenths of a foot to 665 feet even. And in your pollen count, this is what we like to see. Three allergens today, including mountain cedar. Thankfully, everything is nice and low. We'll be right back. Great stretch of weather, a little cool off yesterday. Nice again. Yeah, cold this morning too, but it's so beautiful out now when that sun came out. Oh, it's going to be a really nice evening. So if you've got plans tonight, you, you will want a light coat or a jacket because temperatures will tumble pretty nicely after the sun goes down, but otherwise really comfortable. So let's take a look at uh, the big headlines over the next several days tomorrow. That's when things start to subtly change more cloud cover and also a bit more humidity. You'll notice it a lot more by the end of the day on Sunday. That increase in humidity will lead to some fog and drizzle by the Monday morning commute. And as far as temperatures go, we will start next week unseasonably warm, even hot at times, and then turn cold once again. So the temperature roller coaster, it continues, and you're going to want to buckle up. Next week looks like it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. Let's focus on this, though. Beautiful out there now. Mostly clear, 65 at the airport, low humidity, and light winds. That's how we like it. Sun goes down just before 630, and after that, temperatures will fall quickly. So we're in the 60s now. We'll be mid to upper 50s by 8 p.m., approaching the upper 40s as we get closer to midnight. So again, if you're heading out tonight, just a light coat or a jacket will do you just fine. Currently 65 in Kerrville, 66 Uvalde, and 68 in Catula, just nice and comfortable. And again, mostly sunny all across the area. A lot of this cloud cover that's showing up on our satellite picture is some high, thin cloud cover, so we'll keep you mostly clear this evening. Through the overnight hours, there will start to be an increase in cloud cover. So by the time you get up in the morning, partly cloudy skies, low temperatures for a lot of us settling right around 40, including here in San Antonio and in New Braunfels. Few degrees
degrees warmer down to the southwest. We'll go mid 40s from Del Rio down to Eagle Pass and Catula to start you off on Sunday through the day tomorrow. We'll continue to see a steady increase in cloud cover. So by this time tomorrow afternoon and evening, it will likely be mostly cloudy, so not as much sunshine tomorrow, but not an uncomfortable day. Our afternoon highs for a lot of us, upper 60s, low 70s, some mid to upper 70s down to the southwest Catula. You could get closer to the upper 70s there. Meanwhile, in the hill country, mid to upper 60s for your high temperatures on Sunday. Bit breezy tomorrow, south winds 10 to 15. That south wind will usher in a little bit more humidity during the day tomorrow. Now, I think the humidity increase on Sunday during the day is going to be fairly subtle and you're not really going to notice it. Here's 4 p.m. tomorrow. Our dew points for a lot of us will still be in the 50s, so that's still feeling fairly pleasant. But watch what happens Sunday night into Monday morning. Our dew points take that leap from pleasant into muggy territory. And in some cases, we'll have dew points in the upper 60s. That's really starting to feel quite muggy. So it will be muggy by early Monday morning, and that will aid in the development of some fog and drizzle, even a few spotty showers to start the day on Monday. Notice not as cold Monday morning with the increase in humidity. Our temperatures don't fall as much, so we'll be low 60s Monday. Look by Monday afternoon with skies clearing a warm and muggy day to start next week. 82 your afternoon high will nudge afternoon highs up even a little bit more by Tuesday, so unseasonably warm early next week. But look at this big temperature drop. These are your afternoon high temperatures, 40s, 50s, middle back half of next week. So we do have another cold front poised to move through early in the day on Wednesday. This will bring a cold air mass into place and then our weather pattern will generally remain fairly unsettled middle and back half of next week. We're just going to have pieces of upper level energy moving in from the southwest and you can see that will lend itself to some rain chances essentially each day back half of next week. Unfortunately, I don't think it will add up to much and really it's just going to put us in kind of a cold, damp pattern to end next week. So we have that to look forward to. I guess winter's not done with us just yet. We've got more cold weather in store Sunday again, increasing clouds, increasing humidity, fog and drizzle developing late tomorrow night into Monday morning and check out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with that colder air mass in place some cloud cover, low end rain chances. We've got some pretty chilly cold days coming up second half of next week, guys. All right. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. All right, Larry DeJounte Murray representing our Spurs at the NBA All-Star Weekend up in Cleveland. He's in his fifth full season in the NBA, and I'll tell you what, he's like a kid in a candy store right now up in Cleveland, Ohio, as part of NBA All-Star Weekend. DeJounte is certainly having a great time. And in high school basketball, the playoffs, the Steel Lady Knights won a tough game last night. Coming up. Man, it's, it's, it's fun uh, just taking it in, taking it all in and trying to enjoy the moment, uh, you know, and just excited, just still excited to look forward to it. Ajante Murray is soaking up NBA All-Star Weekend in Cleveland, Ohio in Big Board Sports. Spurs point guard DeJounte Murray is having the time of his life at NBA All-Star Week, and he's just absolutely loving it. Murray received a nice ovation when he was introduced ahead of All-Star practice this morning. Now, they use the word practice, but it's way more fun than that and very lighthearted. Murray will play for Team Durant, which is coached by Miami Heat head coach Eric Spolstra. Some of the members on Team Durant include Ja Morant, Joel Embiid, Trey Young, and guard Devin Booker. Today, during All-Star Media Avail, Murray was asked what it's like hanging out with Team Durant. Uh, the locker room was dope. First and foremost, uh, we all were smiling, joking, and just, you know, enjoying it. Uh, got a relationship with a lot of them, so that made it easy. But, you know, even the ones that I don't talk to on a day-to-day -day basis or at all, uh, we got to build a relationship, and we're going to continue to build a relationship while we're here. Two-time NBA All-Star Manu Ginobili was named the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame Finals yesterday as part of NBA All-Star Weekend. Manu is a four-time NBA champion with the Spurs. On the international stage, he helped deliver the first and only gold medal in Argentina's basketball history at the 2004 Olympics, as well as the bronze at the 2008 Games. He's the one of 11 finalists for the class of 2022. The entire Hall of Fame class will be announced during the NCAA Final Four in early April. 
Texas alum Mo Bamba in Austin today to watch number 11, Texas Tech at number 20, Texas. First half, Tech shoots and misses. Adonis Arms gets the ball and throws it down, and it's 11 to 10 Tech. They were tied 28 all at halftime. Late second half, Horns Andrew Jones makes the three, and Texas is down 56-55, but Texas wouldn't score again, and Tech takes it 61-55, sweeping the two-game regular season series. Number seven, Baylor played host to TCU today. First half action, Bears Jeremy Sohan drives, and he spins a couple of times before making a fadeaway jumper. He led Baylor with 17 points. Matthew Meyer was next with 16, and the Bears win 72-62. We'll play at Oklahoma State on Monday night. In girls high school basketball, Steele beat Round Rock Cedar Ridge in the Class 6A second round of the playoffs of last night. Steele led by one, 38-37, with less than three and a half minutes left in the fourth. But Sydney Love would make this bucket for a three-point lead and some breathing room. Less than a minute to go, Addison James scores from just under the bucket, and the Steele Lady Knights go on to win it, 49 to 43. Love led the way with 23 points, and the Lady Knights are moving on. We knew that if we made it this far, we'd be making history and still everybody seeing us as an underdog, so we knew we had to come out on top. Um, we had some great competition tonight, but we prepared, and I just think that as far as uh, as we're going to go as far as we go, and as long as we listen to our coaches, we'll do great. Steel will next face Austin SFA in the third round or the regional quarters Tuesday, 7 p.m. at Dripping Springs High School. The second game of the doubleheader last night saw the Clark Cougars against Vista Ridge. Haley Adams pulls up for the long jumper and misses, but Ariana Robertson grabs the rebound and puts it back for an eight-point lead. Robertson now in the lane, stops, spins, and knocks down the jumper, and the lead grows to 10. Cue up Ramsey Robledo for three. It's good, and the Cougars are moving on 70 to 38. They'll play Johnson in the Class 6A third round Tuesday, 6 p.m. at Northside Sports Gym. At the UIL State Wrestling Tournament, only one of our boys is left standing in the Class 6A ranks. New Braunfels junior Landon Marsh advanced to the championship bout at 182 pounds with a 9-8 decision in this morning's state semifinal match. Joining him in tonight's festivities will be Smithson Valley senior Sage Benka, who won her semifinal match via second period pin in the girls' 140-pound bracket. She has pinned all three of her state opponents so far. The Parade of Champions has already begun. We'll have the results from tonight's competition on the night beat. The UIL state season continues this afternoon up in Austin with a Class 5A state swimming and diving championships. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley made the trip up to the swim center, and he has more. All eyes were on Alamo Heights senior Connor Foote swimming his last high school meet this afternoon at the Lee and Joe Jamil Swim Center in Austin. His first individual event was the 100-yard butterfly, and after setting a state record yesterday, all he does today is lower that mark once again. His final time, 46.09 seconds. Later in the meet, Foote struck again, this time in the 100-yard backstroke, capturing his second straight state title in the event. But his most impressive swim might have been the leadoff leg on the 200-yard freestyle relay. Foote set another state record in the 50-yard freestyle black Blasting out in a 19.88. He's the only one under 20 seconds at the meet, and Foote's final tally is two golds, a bronze, and a pair of records. Great high school career. I came out here wanting to set some records, put my name in there, and leave it there for a couple years. It sets me up pretty well. I mean, I'm going to go to AM next year, have some great teammates there, and I'm really excited. On the girls' side, Bernie Champion continued their streak of relay success at state. Final girls' event, the 400 yard freestyle relay. Paige Clark, Reagan Garcia, and Kate Deacon handed it off to Peyton Bremer for the anchor leg. She splits a 51.03 as the Chargers come from behind to win it in three minutes, 32.19 seconds. This year we just had a really big drive because they're leaving. They're the seniors, so we just wanted to end the year off really nice for them and just put all of our hard work into it, and it was really rewarding. The 6A schools are just about to hit the water as we speak. We'll have a full recap of their meet coming up later tonight on the Night Beat. From Austin, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you very much, Andrew, and that's certainly some uh, good swimming going on up there. Yeah, some love for the kids in the pool. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. Real quick, just want to let you know what's going on over at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo Show tonight. It is a big one. Tim McGraw performing. Oh, shoot, too bad we're working. Yeah. I know. I would love to go to that. We, we could, if they had VIP seats for us, we could probably make it back in time. <laughs> we can run there. If you see us, <laughs> we're running back to work. Um, for all things rodeo, just get in that QR code or right on your screen. Oh, that, that'll be a good show. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people were going to that. Uh, if you are going to that tonight, so grab a light coat or jacket. It will get cool once the sun goes down. Temperatures falling into the 50s. We'll wake up closer to 40 tomorrow morning. 
upper 60s in the afternoon. What you'll notice tomorrow weather wise more clouds, a lot more clouds than what we saw today and also increasing humidity, especially by tomorrow night. That leads us into some fog and drizzle developing Sunday night into Monday morning. A little bit breezy tomorrow. South winds 10 to 15. Tim and Courtney. Thanks, Katie. That's all of our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here on time tonight for the night beat. No excuse. You got to join us. We'll see you then. <laughs>